Hey everyone, this is James from Brewing Books. So today we'll be having a look at what I consider to be the best and my favorite Middle-earth book, The Silmarillion. So The Silmarillion, in Tolkien's own words, is the history of the War of the Exiled Elves against the Enemy, which all takes place in the northwest of the world, Middle-earth. Several tales of victory and tragedy are caught up in it, but it ends with catastrophe and the passing of the ancient world. Mmm, ends with catastrophe. That already sounds tantalizing. So this publication was released in 1977 and is edited by Christopher Tolkien, in which he gathers several manuscripts in various stages of completion from over a span of 60 years to create this body of work on a gargantuan scale. I do not consider the Silmarillion as being a novel in itself, it is more rather a chronicle with several story strands of different characters and environments that are intertwined together, framed within a broad narrative plot. The language it is written in is archaic, and as a book it is a cleverly crafted chronicle of epic events that take place over thousands of years. It really is a pity that many of the stories have not been developed to the full, so thank goodness for the children of Hurin, at least. The book deals with the cosmological and the nature of the world, which leads to the political and warfare aspects of elves, men, dwarves and the forces of evil. Due to its high concept, it makes it just short of becoming a mythology in itself. So the book is split up into five minor works, Ainulindale, Valaquenta, Quenta Silmarillion, Akallabet, Of the Rings of Power and the Third Age. The last two works deal with the Second Age and the downfall of Numenor and the events leading up to the Lord of the Rings. So Tolkien's wish of combining stories stretching far back from the creation of the jewels of the Silmarils until the destruction of the One Ring into a single book was finally achieved. Besides Tolkien's vivid imagination, extraordinarily detailed world building and engaging storylines, the Silmarillion is a testament to Christopher Tolkien's superb skills as an editor and the ability to collate together six decades worth of work into as cohesive a narrative as possible, which is frankly astounding. The History of Middle-earth series indeed tracks the progress of how the published Silmarillion came to be and the major editorial issues that Christopher faced along the way. To this end, the Silmarillion cannot be seen as a standalone work, nor as a completed one. It is, forgive the word, a patchwork of different writings that, whilst they might make sense chronologically, the way they're presented in the book, certain inconsistencies will naturally arise between certain elements or aspects brought up in a chapter, say, that was left unrevised in the 1930s, as compared to another chapter that has seen numerous revisions and drafts by Tolkien in the late 60s. Nevertheless, this is truly a work I admire, both from an authorial perspective and, in my opinion, as one of the finest editorial exercises in modern literature. Besides the fantastical elements in the stories and the range and breadth of themes, motifs and thousands of years of history, this book, this 300-page book from cover to cover, also contains genealogical tables, maps, language pronunciation notes, an index of names and an appendix on Quenya and Sindarin, which make this book an almost exhaustive introduction to everything you ever wanted to know, not just about Middle-earth or the world of Arda, but also the more cosmogonical and metaphysical aspects of Tolkien's created mythology. I've always said this ever since I made the difficult decision of choosing my favorite Tolkien book from Middle-earth. The Silmarillion's power to move and excite me is only due because I'm also in love and have a knowledge of the stories in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. They are all part of the same cycle of stories, and while both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings work as standalone novels, The Silmarillion doesn't. It is part of the fabric of what makes Middle-earth special and will always be my favorite in light of the other works that exist about the secondary world. And what's even better? Can't get enough of The Silmarillion? 
add unfinished tails into the mix and you're sorted. So this is of course just my personal opinion about the Silmarillion, but I truly, truly love this book. Agree? Disagree? Let's start a discussion in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And as always, like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.